Right, everybody, uh, got to tell you that round two of the 2021 Betfred Super League season has been renamed the Mossy Masoy Round. Fans encouraged to buy virtual tickets to support the Mossy Masoy Foundation. Uh, and we should tell you right at the top of this podcast that you can text 5 Mossy to uh, 70085 to donate £5, 10 Mossy to donate £10. You get the picture. You can donate up to 20 quid uh, or visit the um, the website www.mossymasoyfoundation.co.uk. Mossy's going to be in the Sky Sports Studio as well uh, on Thursday night for the Hull KR St Helens game. And uh, if you're wondering, uh, I'm sure you know, you're fully aware of this story, but the, the initial campaign will raise money for Mossy, uh, his partner Carissa and their three young children, uh, daughters Evie Rose, Marlo and baby son uh, Louis as well. That is Mossy, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube. He hasn't paid the bills in his in his house, so we, I can guarantee you that is Mossy. Or, or is it? Um, welcome, Mr Mossy Masoy, to Out of Your League. Great to have you on the podcast, mate. And look, you need, you need no introduction to these two clowns because you spent a couple of years at St. Helens with them. Happy memories, Mossy, yeah, 2014? Yeah, yeah, really good memories. Um, you know, there was, there was one day in there when, um, when Wilco used to, um, his, 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 back, his back door in his car never used to lock and I used to go, like, like climb in the back <laughs> of his car and scare him when he drive away. <laughs> so, so there's plenty of great memories there and... Uh, uh, yeah, so they, but can you imagine yeah, anything scarier, Will? Driving, driving off in your car, right? Mossy cannot disguise. <laughs> he couldn't hide behind a building. He's that big. Do you know what I mean? He got into the boot of my car without me knowing. <laughs> lay down in the boot. I've been driving five minutes off, and he's just crept over the back seat, come towards the front. <laughs> just, and look, this man has got one of the biggest heads in rugby league. That's a big head, that. <laughs> The camera is no. If the camera was the same distance as ours, you would all you'd see is his nose. That is it. So he came out the boot. He came out of the boot of the car, and I'll, I'll be honest. I uh, I went into uh, fight or flight mode, and and my instant reaction was to was to run away. <laughs> That is that is something from a Hollywood thriller. That one, some sort of crime scene. <laughs> it's awful. Ever in the back of Flanagan's boot, Mossy? Nah, nah. He, no, he, had, he actually he had too much respect for me. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've heard all, all all sorts of stories. Wilkin used to give you little wedgies in the canteen at lunchtime as well. He used to <laughs> he used to bully you, Mossy. Yeah, no, nah, he was he was the bully of the of the team, uh, stealing my lunch, giving me wedgies, <laughs> <laughs> making me make him coffee. <laughs> no, this is all it's all not true. None of that's true. <laughs> That's yeah. But in, in all seriousness, that, that night, because I remember being there and watching Mark and John and you, Mossy, of course, Old Trafford 2014. I mean, that is that is memories that all of you, Mark, will remember forever and ever, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it, was something, it was something I dreamed of. I'm sure Mossy coming over from Australia to play over here was something that he wanted to achieve and to do it with some great players and some, some great men and Mossy included, it will be mates for life and... Yeah, I love taking the field with Mossy every time I, I did. It. It, it was it was a great place to play with. Well, what are your memories of that night? I know you didn't didn't play. You were watching whatever, but well, it was difficult for you to watch. Yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I think the biggest thing was um, me, me and Johnny Lomax. Uh, we'd been carrying injuries like all the way through the year, pretty much, and then I think it was about six weeks out from the uh, GF, you know, I had to have a reconstruction on my shoulder. So me and John Lomax had this moment in in the showers at Old Trafford where we just fucking weeped. <laughs> it was pathetic, honestly. It was really bad. We just like stood and we were like, we're happy, we're, you know, we're happy for the boys, but we're like, oh, <laughs> like just, you know, self-pity and it's worst, you know, like the worst thing. But the, the interesting thing about that was that, look, we were both injured and, and, and having... You know, having Mossy here to be able to talk about that, the, the injuries are, are just part of the game. That was an amazing night, look. An, ama- an amazing night for Saints and, and an amazing night for what was a great team that was written off actually all year. We were never given the credit we, we deserved for how we'd gone that year. Uh, but but in my mind, selfishly, that, that night probably was that moment in the in the sh- in the shower with Johnny Lomax just w- sobbing on each other's shoulders just before the lads went out. But... You know that that sport, and uh, yeah, it's it was it was a mega year for saying that. 
Look, Mossy, I've got so much respect for what you, you've been through. And I know a lot of people within the Rugby League fraternity have heard your story, but there are plenty of people who haven't. And hopefully people who are listening to this. Um, so if, if you don't mind, Mossy, take us back to, because that was a, obviously a massive highlight in your career, 2014. And you've had some, some dark, dark moments along the way as well. Um, this career ending spinal injury happened in a, in a trial match, didn't it? For, for Hull KR against Wakefield. Just take us back to that that match and that moment and, and your thoughts sort of pre-game and building up to, to, to that moment which changed your life. Yeah, um, that pre-season was a bit different. Um, you know, that was the first time coaches said to me um, I, I was able to lift some weights and, you know, like they, they weren't really worried about how heavy I was going to be or anything. You know, they said, you know, you've you got to be that guy because everyone else is fit. So I was like, how good's this? So I was... I was you know, smashing all the weights at training and, you know, just getting massive. And I was just like, how good is this? I, I can't wait. I can't wait till the season starts. Eh? And I was, I was just hyped up for the season. And um, yeah, we had a really good preseason. And um, yeah, and then it happened in the first, I think, two or three minutes of the game. Um, didn't even get to touch the ball. So um, we, we were just defending, defending, and they got a penalty. Then um, they, they, they made a play to... Um, and it looked like it was going to score a try. I, I tried to run across and cover, and then, yeah, it just happened. And then, you know, when it initially happened, I was just like, oh, I, I thought I was knocked out. Because, you know, you get that dazed kind of feeling. You, you're lying on the ground, you kind of look over to the thing, and I said, oh, I'm just going to close my eyes and, you know, um, you know let, it, let it kick in. But um, I opened my eyes, and then I was like, oh, I can't feel my legs. Like, where are my legs gone? Yeah, yeah. It felt like, you know, that magician thing, you know, when they cut someone's legs and they take them away in a box. That's, I was like, oh, I was that guy and he just left my head there. So, um, yeah, that was a bit freaky. Yeah. and um, It was a really so innocuous carried... challenge as well, wasn't it, Moss? It didn't look like yeah, anything. Yeah, it was. Uh, no, nah, yeah, it wasn't. I was kind of saying to people, I think it's just like, you know, you drop your phone a million times, you know, and, and it doesn't crack, you know, and then that one time you drop it on the, you know, like from like a, a little height and it just that perfect angle and it just went, poof, it just shattered. So, and probably years of abuse of just running into brick walls and things like that. But, you know, that's just, that's the game. And, and, I, and I, I still love the game and I miss it. That's what I, and if if I got cured from this, I'd probably go do it again. So, um, yeah, when, yes. <laughs> what was the moment like then you know you described there being what it was like being on the floor and the, the, that sort of moment of impact and, and probably just like I mean how many times you've been concussed in your career probably in double figures you know I know Mark has as well which is why he's the way he is um, but serious question though the moment that the medical staff came on for you going to the hospital and that realisation kicking in what was that like? Um, you know the realisation come pretty quick it was when I was in the medical office waiting for the uh, the ambulances to come and um, I said to my missus oh, can you just like really pinch my leg as hard as you can and then I was like well, like five seconds later I said oh did, did you pinch my leg and she, she was like yeah I pinched it and um yeah she, she actually put a big like scar in my leg but I, I, could, I couldn't feel it um you know so that that was the moment I knew oh this this is not good like something bad has happened here so um yeah so they rushed me to hospital i was lucky um you know i there was um a doctor on there straight away ready to you know um perform the surgery and oh, i'm just i'm just lucky that it all kind of worked out well um the surgery and things like that because because it's time if, if you leave it for too long and you, you or you might not get certain things back so um, uh, the way I, um, the analogy I use, it's kind of like, you know, when you, you're hosing your yard and so your hose is your, like your spinal cord your, with the water and stuff. And then sometimes if you can't get back to where that, um, where the tap is to turn it off, you, you kind of just like kink it, like to stop the water. So that, that's what happened to me. So my, my one got kinked and, and then no, no nerves or no signals, or they're sending the signals, but yeah, they, they, they weren't getting through like from my C4, C5. So everything underneath my shoulders down was, was all like, it wasn't working. Or if, if it was working, it wasn't, 
it was involunt involuntary. It was like spasming. My body was just um, bit out, bit out of control. So, so he he went in and and kind of released the hose, and then just waiting for um, um what you call it again? Um, just yeah, it's just time, and just gotta wait until till the water can can go through. So. Yeah. Mossy, you're, say, you're saying all of this with a smile on your face as well at the moment, but I mean, how scared were you at the time? Um, a, a little bit scared, um, but op optimistic always. Like, um, you know, I'm, I've always been that person. We're down by 50 points, five minutes to go. I was, oh, yeah, we can still win this game. I'm that guy. So, <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he said Deluded. to me, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a bit, a bit crazy. Uh, but yeah, that, it happened. But you know, now it's, it's time for me just to you know just kick on and just hopefully get things back. If we go back in time, Mossy, you know, you, you, I remember when you you signed for Saints. I remember me and you having a conversation, and you'd had a repair on your neck. You know, you'd had this surgery on your neck back in Australia, and I remember at that time thinking I'd had a similar surgery, but yours was a lot different. To, to the one that I'd had, hadn't it? So, you, so you tell yeah. people about that that history of your neck and and and, yeah. and the background. Yeah. So um, I had um, it's called a disc replacement. So I had like two disc replacements in my in my neck, and um, they take out your old discs and put in the new ones. So, um, it just, it just helps with the what you call it again. So 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 when you when when someone gets a dead shoulder or something, it's normally um, they're just slipping into their spinal cord, you know, and, and then it kind of goes back. So um, no, thank God that 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 wasn't the the cause. Um, you know that we asked the doc. I I asked the doctor straight away. I said, mate, did those things break in my neck? And he was like, no. It's just what happens with, over time with that kind of stuff. It's um. Like the the ligaments and stuff start taking all the pressure and things, up and I I, I still kind of don't understand, but what what they um what they what they told me, and um they pretty much said this it was just all the ligaments and it's just got the spinal cord just got strangled, and um yeah and, and I lost um they lost all the sensation from my, from my shoulders down. I mean, Mossy. We're... I have no idea how I would react in that situation, being in a hospital bed, and especially when you were told the news that, you know, you might never be back to normal. Um, how, how did you take take that news? Because I imagine that came a few days later. That wasn't all just in the space of twenty four hours. How how did you digest that? Uh, you know what? Um, you know, I've, I've, I I was I grew up with my cousin. He's um, got cere really bad cerebral palsy, so he's like wheelchair bound, are uh, bound and. Like he can't talk, he mumbles, he, but he knows who I am. I used to always hang around with him, like, because I had three sisters and then it was only him and as a, as a boy, so I would rather go hang out with him than my three sisters. And it was just us, I like, used to like cruise around in his wheelchairs and we should just like play around. He, he uses a, a motorized wheelchair and stuff like that. So, so me sitting there trying to feel sorry for myself wasn't, it was never on the, on the cards, man, because like I look back at him, and he never had the opportunity to do what I, I've done. You know, I've, I've I've got to live my life for the thirty-one years, and and I've lived it, and so, you know, now it's just recovery now, and um, you know, I've I've got a chance to hopefully get back as much as I can, but um, that's how I got to look at things now. Just 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 keep grinding away and hope for the best. Mark, what was that like when you when you heard the news? Because I mean, I remember exactly where I was when I saw it. And the first person I th well, obviously thought of Mossy, but I don't I don't know Mossy was was you two having having played with him. How how much of an impact did that have on you guys? Um, it had quite a big impact to be honest. I remember watching. I was looking on Twitter to to see what what the issue was, and I saw f a few videos of, of what had happened. I think the next day, and um, it saddened me firstly um, because. Um, as John and I were saying off camera a bit earlier that Mossy is without doubt the nicest person I've played with uh, in rugby league, and that, that's probably fourteen seasons, probably a hundred blocks, one hundred and fifty blocks, and I can say without doubt he's the nicest guy, he's the most humble, respectful 
person I've ever met. And listening to him then, it's uh, it it didn't surprise me to hear his outlook on on the injury in life because um, he's always had that that outlook of of there's always people worse off. He's always put people in other people in other shoes. He's always thought of those he loved around him and, and, and those teammates and people around him. He'd take the shirt off his back and give it to you if, if you needed it and he'd do anything for a, for a friend. Um, so have, having heard the news, it, it really did upset me because um, the, of all the people that didn't deserve to have such a horrific injury, I think Mossy would be top of that list because, um, like I said, he does so much for others and um, he's, 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 he's truly a great guy. John, you had a very similar yeah. injury as well, didn't you? Just, I mean, that would have you would have been thinking that straight away. Oh, mate! When when I heard the news, my mind went straight back to the conversation me and Mossy had had when he just signed for Saints. Like I was saying about his injury and his, you know, that 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 history of of of, of the neck, and you know, and it's you look know, like everybody does in that situation. I, I thought about myself as well, you know, as well as I thought about Mossy. I was really upset for Mossy but at that point I, I was like questioning well I've had a C6-7 diskectomy I, I had my C6-7 taken out I lost the feeling in my right arm and my right tricep for about a period of about three months which I didn't realise I thought it was a shoulder injury at the time but I ended up being an, a neck injury and, and uh, when I heard about Mossy I, you know, I thought about that conversation I, and, and I think a lot about you know the, the 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 medical side of the game about the injuries that which you know players put themselves through and you know and knowing that Mossy had that pre-existing condition I think a lot of my thoughts around the time were about you know how much was that related to it and um, you know it's, it's encouraging to hear from Mossy it's nothing to do with, with the repair that he'd had but without doubt Will I can say the reason Mossy got the injury he did is the size of his head it's it's disproportionate to the rest of himself. If you have a head that big, imagine there's a lot of stress going through that neck, Mossy. You know there, there must be some stress. So uh, I'm blaming uh, head volume. So in terms of head volume, I know we've had this chat quite a lot and we've done it extensively. I think James Graham was was up there. We have had Sam Burgess who's got quite a large head, but Mossy, Mossy Masoy. You know at the point at which he got injured, I thought it's the head. It's got to be the head size. Yeah. There's no other explanation. No, I think I think you're right, mate. I definitely think you're right. <laughs> Mossy, Mossy, look, I, I, I absolutely want to fast forward at some stage to, to you right now because you're in such a great place and it's so good to see you smiling and, and, and being, you know, being you. But if, if we can just go back to a moment as well when... Um, when, when you were at your lowest, and look, this is, this is pretty intruding from us, from someone that doesn't know you, and if you can share as much as you'd like to, but when you were at your absolute yeah. lowest, what got you through? Um, right. Just the, boy, the boys, man. <laughs> as, weird, as weird as it is, they were there like every day. It was funny. I'd wake up from bed, and like someone would be sitting there, like one of the bros from the team, you know, my teammates were always there. They never left me alone, um, you know. Like Will, da young Will Dagger, I was, I was like, I was asleep one night and I woke up and it was probably like seven thirty. Just off and on with um, medication. He's, he's sitting there, he's waiting with like dessert for me. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and you know what? The funny thing about it is like, he'll be standing there, he'll be like, and his missus is there as well, and she was she was about eight months pregnant. And they were just waiting for me to wake up. And I was like, oh, dads, what are you doing here? And uh, he's going, oh, I bought you some dessert. And then, like, my, I'm, I'm lying there. I think about it. I couldn't move my arms and my legs. And I was like, oh, this is going to be awkward. Cool, I'm just going to feed me my dessert. And, 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 and then dads is just like, yeah, sweet, where's the spoon? And he just starts feeding me my dessert. Like, my teammate is there feeding me my food. I was like, oh, yeah. You know, all, all that stuff just goes out the window, man. Like, um, you know, and... and, and it would be boys like heaps of boys were just just doing stuff for me or like you know I couldn't put, pick up my legs put on pillows I'd be like you know picking up my legs you have to you have to make sure you, you get turned every four hours just because of um, pressure sores the boys were there the nurses it would take about four nurses to do it <laughs> so um, the boys would just be like oh, yeah, alright we'll, we'll roll them over and put some pillows underneath like it, it was um just, just unbelievable like they got it, it was it was fun they, they got me through man like it was, it was kind of, 
it, you know, yeah, no, nah, it, was, it was unbelievable. I can't, I can't thank them enough because my time flew in there because of them. And then, um, then we, we, we went in. I read a pretty heartwarming story and I hope it's true and I hope you can tell us about it. Yeah. But, um, there was a paraplegic rugby league fan called Wayne oh, who, who Wayne. came to, yeah. to see you. Tell us about Wayne. Oh, Wayne's the man. Just, no, nah, he's a, he's the man. Um, he, he, he's, he's a big, he's a big uh, Featherston um, Rovers fan. So, um, um, yeah, so Wayne, is, he's, um, he had an accident probably about, I think, I'll say 30 or 40 years ago now. Um, he, he said it was so long ago that they didn't have to wear seatbelts. He's, he's that type of bloke. He's really funny. So he, he, he was in a car crash and they didn't have seatbelts and, and that's how he got his injury. But, um, you know, when I was in bed and I was just lying there, I used to see him coming past with his wheelchair and I was going, oh, I hope one day I can be like Wayne. And then wait, like, one day I, I, st- I was starting to get like feeling back in my legs like the touch, they, they get this, um, like a pin, prick you everywhere and they, they see if you can feel it. And I start, and then Wayne coming afterwards, he goes, oh, what, can you feel your arms? And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, oh, can you feel your legs? And I was like, yeah, I can, I can feel my legs. And he goes, oh, oh get up, mate. <laughs> Stop faking it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it really, it really, like, it, 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 he, he, because he's been in that situation, he understands it. He knew, somehow he knew that I was going to not be in a wheelchair. Um, he, he knew that I would, I would progress more. Like, I, I don't know how he knew, but he just knew. He just like, mate, you, you're going to walk out of here. It's going to be hard work. You, you walk out with, with crutches or whatever, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. And he would come in every day, like Wayne. He, he works for, um, for a charity in there called Surf. And, and his job is to like um, put on dues for all the um, all the patients and the nurses and things like that. So he's got a, he's got a mean job. So um, yeah, so he's he's just there. He's the he's like the morale booster, which which is good. And um, I'm I'm glad I listened to him, and because I, I just wanted to be like Wayne. I, I was like, and he was like, Nah, nah, mate, you you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna walk out of here. That's that's amazing that you, and that you believed him as well. And look, Mossy. It's worth telling people listening. You're 125 kilograms there or thereabouts, right? <laughs> so yeah. six foot six. I don't know how much weight you lost when you were in hospital or gained or, or whatever, because I know some of the steroids can put weight on as well. But when you started to take your first steps, which must have been such an emotional moment for you, for your family, for your kids. Um, this was in September. Did you believe you'd get to that moment to, to be walking with crutches and and? And what the hell was that like standing up and putting one foot in front of the, uh, another? It must have been such a huge step in, in, in the right direction for you. Quite overpowering. Yeah. Um, when I was lying in bed, I think this is the best way to lose weight is to lie in bed and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would say that. <laughs> Mossy would say well, that. I, Trust me. Honestly, <laughs> I, I was 133 kilos when I went in um, to hospital. Um, when I weighed myself, when I got into a wheelchair, I was 113 kilos. So I lost 20 kilos. How did you I, lose that? Just, I mean, just, just not training? And no, 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 yeah, lost muscle mass or just bare belly gone and things like that, you know? It was just, yeah, 20 kilos gone in um, eight weeks. Yeah, so so if you want to lose weight, just lie in bed for eight weeks and you'll lose about 20 kilos. <laughs> Don't, do not... Whatever you do, do not break your neck. Do you know? Yeah. You've got to be clear here, Will. <laughs> yeah, is suggesting it. laying. He's suggesting laying <laughs> down for a long period of time. He is not <laughs> suggesting anyone tries and breaks the neck. Okay? Yeah, that's it. Just to be clear. <laughs> but but that moment, Mossy, when you were walking, I mean, to me, I can I can see the film. Do you know what I mean? I, it, we've seen it in yeah. Hollywood, haven't we? With, with with accidents and people walking again. What was was that emotional for you? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, yeah, there was heaps of um, he- heaps of things going through my like my head. Just just uh, the doctors, you know, saying oh, you you might not ever walk again and and things like that. And I was just like, oh, I'm gonna prove you. I'm gonna prove you wrong, mate. I- I'm gonna walk. And then when it came when it came to that moment, I was just like, oh, yeah, I've proved them wrong. So uh, I really felt it was it was like winning a grand final. 
for myself. Um, and uh, I was so stoked. But before, <laughs> before I, I got to walk, this is a funny story. Um, so I, you're lying flat on your bed for, I was seven weeks. And then because you're lying down for seven, your body gets used to lying down. So for, for, for one whole week, they had to like, every 20 minutes, they had to raise my bed up, like, oh, you know, so, to sit up. And then I, to a point, and then I'd just, I'd, I'd faint, you know, like, and that, that would happen for like a week, just, just to get, because all the blood just drops to your legs. And um, it took me like a week just to be able to sit up. It was, it was so weird. Yeah, and then, and then that, yeah. And then, and then at that time, from that week, the next week, they put you on a, on, a, on a bed and they strap you into this bed and then like like you're lying down, but then they put the bed right up to a point like you're standing, just, and but the blood just rushes out down to your legs and you, ne you nearly faint. Like you just, you just feel like spaced out all the time. So th those two weeks, I can't really remember much, but besides just fainting all the time or, or feeling lightheaded. Uh, yeah, so that, that was crazy, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, no, that 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 um, moment where you took those steps, Mossy. Like, is it was it bittersweet? Because in some ways, look, it's the achievement of walking and and this positive mindset that you've got. I think is is remarkable. But was it also a reminder of how far you had to go at that point? Yeah, that yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, at, at that time, I just thought I, I've clocked this game. You know, like if you were playing that like PlayStation, I said, walking is the last thing. And then, um, and then they bought they bought out round two and round three and four. So it, it, it was a, it was awesome that I did walk, like started walking. But there, there's so many more battles now to to fight along the way. I mean, so many battles, Mossy. I, I, it's just, I, I know, I know you kind of. When you talk, you have to talk so desensitized from it, don't you? You have to take all of the other bits away, otherwise you're not going to win that battle. I mean, it's it's not just a physical battle; it's an emotional battle, a financial battle as well. Which is so good that this second round has been been named after you. How did all all that come about for you? Because I mean, I know for one, I'll be sticking twenty quid in straight after this. No, thanks, mate. Um, honestly, I'm just I'm just grateful. You know, Neil, because Neil was dealing with my insurance at the moment, and and Neil's gone to a few of his friends, and because because Neil understands the severity of the the injury, he deals with a lot of um, people in, in in car accidents that that have spinal injuries and 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 all the claims and and all and kind of like all the all what it costs, you know, like the rehab, the. Um, what do you call it again? The adaptations you need to do your house, the like, uh, um, you know, your job renovations. Yeah, and your job job loss. You know, you you won't be able to do you know, like certain jobs or, or, or jobs at all. Um, so he he kind of he really understands the big picture. He's he's gone to to a few of his mates and told them my story, and they they pretty much said, "Man, we're gonna start this this Mossy Masoi Foundation." And everyone's congratulating me about it, and. I had no idea that they were going to do it, and and they come to me and they say they come to me and they said, oh, we're going to do this with or without you because it's, it's to help you and your family, and and not just to help me and my family, it's um like to help out other other players that might get into the situation. Touch wood, it doesn't, and and it never needs to be used. But you know, if if it if it does happen, um yeah, we're there to help them. So now I'm just I'm just grateful that we we got like really nice people behind us and willing to help us. Yeah, you spoke about the, the initial challenge. So the initial challenge, Mossy, is 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 facing, you know, paralysis or or, or or being, you know, severely disabled for an extended period of time. And then you spoke about the challenge of walking. Uh, and then look, there's other challenges, more interesting, more fun challenges for me to listen to that have happened <laughs> along the way, isn't there? So talk to us about how these challenges have, have, have evolved. Oh, mate, you know what? I'll try to be as open as possible and I'll try to keep it funny. So, you know, in hospital, you know, when people are kind of like saying, oh, well, if you're lying in bed for six, six to eight weeks, you can't move. How do you go to the toilet and stuff? So um, 
So you have a catheter right there, so that's all sweet. But the other, the back side, <laughs> um, you know, all, all that all that stuff changes. So, so you um, what, how the doctor explained it to me. You have three. Everyone has three contractions roughly in your stomach, or well, every hour, you know, to 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 push the food along, you know, so it can get down to, uh, um, to your bowels and 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 you be able to release them. But when you get a spinal cord injury, it, it goes down to like three a day. So you go from what, three times 24 hours, that's what, 70, 72. You go from 72 contractions to um, to three contractions. So they just they just pump you with heaps of pills, you know, laxatives and things like that to be able to move it, um, move it down because because if, if, if your bowels clog up, you know, that's a big problem for spinals. So, so that you get all those laxatives, but then how, is, how does it come out when you're in bed? So you, you just have to take a shit in bed. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, um, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. So the, the, they come in in the morning, you know, like, a, you know, but you, there was, there was that, like everyone in the unit in the morning will have to do their bowel care. So, um, you know, you, they turn you to the side. Uh, the way that they're trying to train my bowel is they'll stick stick a finger like a finger up there, check if there's anything there. Um, if there's something there, just they'll wait a little bit. So nurses are standing there wait, like watching you like you're gonna take a shit. And then they'll stick a, a, an, an enema up there and then they'll just wait about 20 minutes and pull the blanket over and then and then and then you do your business like do your business and if you don't they'll just wait you know they'll wait to the next day and then they'll clean it all up and then off to a off to a shower and then um when after you have a shower you've got clean sheets and you know same thing the next day so oh so no sorry stood not, there. not so you lay there mossy so you lay there yeah. so the nurse has got a finger up your bottom or there's the, yeah. they're trying to sort of stimulate some movement what's the conversation yeah. like <laughs> you know at first oh mate all, all that stuff just goes out the window I, I was just so <laughs> nervous like the nurse you know even the nurses um, sorry you don't go for a shower they, they just um, shout, um, shower you in your bed you know like they just um, yeah they just wash you in your bed so you're lying here you can't move and you're just like what's going on nurse like the, the, the nurses were awesome though so they're just, they're, they're all pretty funny. They're, they're, they're so used to it. They just make you feel relaxed. And they're just like, yeah, we'll just give you a bath and, and everything. And, and then you're just like, what the hell's going on? First first maybe week, I was like a bit. But then after a while, you're just like, everyone's, it doesn't happen to everyone in here. So it's not just me. I can't feel, you know, like, and they're just, the nurses are doing their jobs. So they, they looked after me in there and they, you know, they, they were awesome. Now, now you're home, Mossy. Is that is that the, kind of the role that your wife has to um, has to take <laughs> up with the, the showering and, and the finger up the ass? Oh, I'm, I'm lucky enough. I I can shout. I can. I uh, got adaptation put in the house, so then I I can. I, I sit in the bath on a bath seat and then just just fling my legs over and I, I can shower myself. But yeah, um, with the toilet situation, um, yeah, um, my, my my bowels are still not normal anymore, so. Um, it's kind of like potty training, so my same same kind of thing. Um, I've got um, a different kind of chair over the toilet, so I can sit for longer. But the same thing, my missus will have to put a finger up there, have a check, <laughs> see if anything's in there, and uh, that, that's what I call love. And uh, yeah, absolutely, and, and, yeah, that's it's true love. Yeah, and. You know what, Mossy? I, pro- I promise you the last uh, the, the last deep question, and then we'll, we'll definitely be yeah, looking no, no. more forward. And, and, and look, I'm, I'm normally the one who asks the questions like, "Would you rather have two penis for legs or two legs for penises?" You know, I'm, that's the sort of level I'm normally at. <laughs> that is the level. That is the level. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm quite open about it, so so don't worry, guys. No, so so I, I, in terms, the, the one that fascinates me as well. You, you've talked about the the physical battle and struggle and you know the emotional side of it initially happening but what about the you know in terms of mental health because i know mental health can affect sportsmen and women just with just with a 
an injury which can keep them out for six or seven weeks or you're out for the season and the impact that that has on them and their families. But to know you're never going to play again and to have to, you know, to make that announcement, um, the the mental struggle then that, you, you know, you might not walk properly again without crutches and you're taking every battle as it comes. What, what, how, how, do, how do you just ex- explain that that mental fight and how you, the challenges that you face every day mentally? Oh, I just, I just gain strength from, just from not feeling sorry for myself, you know, and just, just, um, just to know other people are doing it just as, just as bad or, or the same thing as you, uh, just, 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 just changing your mindset on, on certain things like, um, you know, that saying glass half empty, glass half full thing, you know, like there, there's a lot of things I can't do at the moment, man, but do I dwell on that? Do I dwell on all those little things? Like I, you know, like my hands are just dilly dilly fingers and things like that. But I'm not gonna sit here and 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 you know be negative about it. I, I just I just focus on the things that I can do, man. And uh, I, and that and I think that's it. You, you only can control what you you can do. And um, you just gotta have that positive mindset. But everyone says being positive is being being happy or being. Uh, the positive is is different. It's it's like um, you just gotta look at things in a more in a more I don't know uh, a more glass full kind of kind of way because there are gonna be a lot of negatives, you know. But you know um, um, that that's how I see it. Have you have you always been like this, Mossy, from a young age? Um. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, um, you know, we, I, I grew up in a pretty working class family, you know, quite quite poor in, in, in an area where we, we didn't have much. So what we got, we were just grateful for what we had, um, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think we, it was just the way I was brought up with, with mum and dad and, um, and, and things and, yeah. Mossy, you're probably blowing the minds of people who gave you that initial prognosis of, you know, I know they didn't say to you, you won't be able to walk, but you might not be able to. Um, what is the prognosis going forward? Because I know you just mentioned there about your fingers and other things that you can't do. But are, are you slowly starting to see as the months go by improvement in all different kind of areas? And, and, I, know, and I know you're a stubborn <laughs> motherfucker, which I absolutely love. And I can I can see you running the 100 metres in about two years time. But, you know, what what is the official prognosis for you you know what it's it's the weirdest injury ever um the, the doctors don't know they they pretty much just said to me you got 18 months so the way you progress as a person it it's like a graph you, you go up for like eight for the first 18 months and you kind of plateau after that well that that's you know the studies that that's been behind spinal cord injuries and and I kind of just said to myself, like, I just got to smash the, the rehab for, for the 18 months. Um, you know, I, you know, like with the bladder and the bowels thing, it's been 14 months now. And I, I don't think, I think this, that might be a, a life thing for for me. Like that, that might be a forever thing. But like, what, well, you know, I can't dwell on that. Um, you know, I, I can, can walk around on crutches. You know, I've, you know, I just got to be, um, well, the things that I have at the moment, I just got to try and make it as strong as possible. So, so I've just been doing pumping the rehab. Yeah, well, see how how important you you've spoken a lot about sort of these characters along your journey that that have been able to empathise with the position you're in. You know, how important is it when you've got such a sort of unique injury to have other people around you who've walked the walk that you're about to do. How important was that for for you as a, a, maybe as a role model or, or for somebody to look up to? No, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, in the hospital, the way the spinal unit, it's not like a normal hospital. It's um they've got they've always got volunteers in, you know, share their story and things like that to help. Um, because it, when when COVID hit, we weren't allowed any um what you call it visitors, so no outdoor visitors. So I couldn't see family, friends. So I got I got um six weeks with all the boys coming in and thing, and then I had the next I think eight weeks, eight or nine weeks with with no one coming in. But 
in saying that, you know, could, we could have took, taken it a negative way and, and cried about it, but it was actually a good thing because I, I got to go talk to a lot of other spinal, like, um, you know, people with spinal injuries. And we, we actually made like a dinner club and stuff like that and in, in, um, in the unit and we're ordering in takeaways and, and, and I think I put on the 20 kilos back on from there. <laughs> and then, um, so it was nice. It was nice to hear their stories. And, and the more I heard their stories, a, a lot of them weren't their fault. And I really felt for them, you know, like some, one of, one of my bros, I know he, he won't mind me saying, but he was in New Zealand. He was, he went to New Zealand on a, um, uh, just for a trip. Um, he was, he was riding one of these um, electric scooters. He fell off, um, dumped his head. So he's got, he had a big um, cave in his head as well. So he had to wear headgear. And then he got hit by a, a taxi um, and, the, and the taxi took off. And yeah, and I was just like, what? like I, I, I could, like we were talking about, it was, it was good because we could really talk about and discuss our feelings and things like that. And it, it helped us get through, get through the process. But um, I, th I think if we didn't have COVID, um, we, we wouldn't have got that chance to make friends. And there was, there was, there was a lot of other people in there in the same situation. We all got to talk to each other and, and, um, and, and that's why I'm not really negative about my injury because you know, I, my one happened to me doing something I love, you know, I love that. I love the game. I love the collision. I love the, camaraderie, I love the, you know, being with the boys, preparing for, for, for battle, that, that, that's, that was my, that was, that's a high that you, you, you can never, you can never get back. Do you know, Mossy, when we spoke to, um, to Rob Burrow, I, rem I remember it, he, he told us one of the things that he, he loved the most was the fact that his kids asked basically stupid, que stupid kid questions, which he found really refreshing because so many people he was used to coming up to him and he could see the sadness in their eyes and, and he didn't need that. You know, he didn't need that energy as, as well as they meant. It was, too, it was too overwhelming and he needed, like you, to, to move on and, and be so positive. Have you found that with, with your daughters, Evie Rose and, and Marla? I think Louis too young to speak, isn't he? But have, have they been so impactful and refreshing for you? Yeah. No, that'd be, that'd be pretty funny because um, cause I've, I've, I've to come from, from upstairs um, to, to downstairs and then um, I, I do my bowel care downstairs and... Um, in the bottom toilet. So they're eating their breakfast and, and they're like, <laughs> cause I yell out to, to my missus, oh, I'm done. Cause I'll use up a whole roll if I try to wipe my own ass with like, cause like my hands don't work. So, <laughs> so um, what do you call it again? It's a big so, ass yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Let's be honest. So I yell out to the missus and get oh, uh, babe, can you come and um, wipe my ass? And then like the girls are like, oh dad. <laughs> when are you gonna get mom to wipe your ass? <laughs> you know, just just funny stuff. Oh god, they they're funny. You know, and um, oh, it, you know, the more and more, you know, the more I talk about it, you know, the the more it just becomes normal for them. Um, and um, I think that's the best thing about it. Um, it was good because um, I think you know with Jenna, Jenna Brooks doing the story, it's really kind of got me out of the out of my comfort zone. And, you know, I've got a chance here just to spread awareness about spinal cord um, injured people. And like, I, I might as well, because some people, they just look normal on the streets, but you, you don't understand everything that's going through, you know, like the internal stuff, the, the mental, the psychological, it's, um, it's a massive battle. Yeah. Well, and, and, and amongst all of this, Mossy, you've got a big move back to Australia, haven't you? Uh, I know you were born in New Zealand, but you've lived in Australia most most of your life, and obviously played for Sydney and, and Penrith as well. Um, is that has that come about because of visa issues? I mean, how that's the, that seems the last thing that you need right now is a sort of big move when you've set up your house and everything with all, all your amendments, like you said. Um, you know, we were always going to move back to Australia. I think um, you know after my career because we we just want to we've been away from family for so long, and I think us realizing that now we, we need we really need to be around or close to family just to help with Carissa because because she's she's doing everything like like I said she has to do the, the finger in the morning and you know and, and everything and, and all the other things and then um 
No, she's um, and just just looking after the kids. I don't, I don't know how she does it, man. Like honestly, she's um, she's been amazing. That's true love, amazing. mate. That's true love, yeah. Mossy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, but us being back in Australia is gonna be um, you know, she might get time. You know, the kids, you know, the kids can go to like, um, you know, aunties and uncles or grandparents, and just she can just have time to herself because since the injury, she's had no time to herself. She's just been you know, on 24-7. When you look back then, Mossy, on rugby league in this country, and we started this podcast, didn't we, by talking about those great memories on that night at Old Trafford and that that season in 2014, which probably seems like yesterday to you. How, how will you look back on it with? Because, and I only ask that because, you know, one of the darkest days came playing for Hulk KR as well. Um, mate, I, I, I got no regrets about playing rugby league. Uh, I bloody love the game. It's funny, I went to the game in the weekend and, you know, just the smell of, um, you know, like um, the Tiger Balm before the game oh, brings back memories, man. <laughs> I was like, how good is this? I was just sitting there and, hang, and you know, just sitting there, just, just oh, how good is this? And, you know, you, you, you can't, I don't know, you, you can't fake that moment, you know, when you're standing in the huddle with the boys and you're just like, I'm, I'm ready to go into battle. You can't, you, you, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing better, um, you know, um, you know, up there, it's, it's up there with like the birth of your kids for, for myself, like that, that is the, you know, that moment with, with big games, you look at each other in the eyes and you go, oh, we're going to do this today and you're like, yeah, and everyone's putting their body on the line out there for, for the team, it's, it's the best feeling ever, so um, I, I can't look back at the, the, um, the injury and be, and, and, and feel down for myself because I've had heaps of good women, good memories with the with the bros here as well, you know, at St. Helens and and, and 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 all the clubs I've been to. So And look Mark, you, you touched on it earlier and said that he's the nicest guy that you've ever played with, Mossy Masoy. But I get I take it it doesn't surprise you whatsoever that the the people that have rallied around him and the world of rugby league coming together for for someone like him and let's face it even if he was a wanker they would do as well but <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, everyone wants to, to to donate to this cause and to help him out for being a top bloke yeah if he was a wanker he wouldn't have had all his teammates sat by his bedside in hospital for, for all those weeks and I think that was more a, a reflection of, of Mossy than it was his teammates and how much of an impact he's obviously had in, on, on those guys um, yeah I think it's, it's great that the rugby league community is, is getting behind him I think it's a great initiative um, this week to, to to call it the Mossy Mossy Masoy round and and there's ways of, of fundraising it. and I just urge anybody t- who's listening to to um, potentially sacrifice a pack of cigarettes or a couple of beers this weekend if if, if times are hard and 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 if they could sacrifice you know five pound ten pound and, and put it towards Mossy um, I think you'd be doing a great thing because we uh, as John always says we we provide entertainment playing rugby league and I think Mossy's injury. Um, it puts into sharp focus how how dangerous uh, and how uh, how how much risk is involved every time a player takes the field and um, rugby league will go along for along for a long long time and um, lads will always will play and there'll always be injuries but I think that such a serious injury as this it has to be addressed and I think um, I think people and fans of the game should 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 try as best as they can to to contribute to the fund and, and, and help Mossy and, and his family with the rest of their lives. Look, Mossy, we put some questions out for people who, who listen to Out of Your League to to ask you a few. And I won't do loads because we've kept you long enough. But oh. and, and I'll spare you from this one, oh, okay. just to let you know, this is the sort of level of question we normally get from Dan okay, Heyman, okay. who said, uh, what would look more weird, a penis without testicles <laughs> underneath or testicles without without a penis above? So look, you don't have to answer that one, but this is a nice it's way a to finish. Question, like well. It's a great question, Lowell. It's a great question. It's a great question. It's a great question. <laughs> well, uh, uh, yeah. Mossy, you can answer that if you want to. Go do do that one first, and then I've got another one for you. I, I think it look weirder if if I had testicles above. So I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it'll look really weird. Yeah, I think weird that's the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was kind of looking down, but I was like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> This is a really nice one, actually. This is the last one I want to put to you because it's a good way to finish. Did Mossy Masoy, uh, this is from Curtis Graham, enjoy running the ball back uh, after the goal line dropout as much as we fans loved watching it? Oh, I loved it because there was no one to run away. You had to face it. <laughs> that was my favourite moment. Um, 
and in the reverse, you know, I love when, you know, kicking off and then the prop, you know, that was the mental game that I loved. You know, when the, when the prop was running it at you and he wanted the challenge, and if he stepped you, you knew that he, you won that challenge. So, so he, he was trying to run away from you. And then I just knew, like from then I was like, you know, I've got you for the rest of the game. You know, I've, I've got into his head, he didn't want, he didn't want some. So I used to always just, just give it to them. <laughs> Does Mossy remember the grand final in 14? Because we kicked off against Wigan and it was Sia and Mossy defending against, uh, defending next to each other. And I think Sia absolutely nailed someone the first carry. And then the next one, Mossy flew out the line and nailed someone again. And I just thought, these boys are on tonight. And it, I could see it in his eye that he was he was ready to do some business and, and he, he surely did. Ah, uh, yeah. That, that's that's my favourite moments, man, on the field with the boys. I, I love the collision side of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why I can't... You know, the, the my neck injury is... Why would you not enjoy that though, Mossy, right? You're six foot six. You're, you're, you're fucking rapid. You're 125 kilos. Like, it'd be really weird if you... that. It's like... It's like saying I like enjoy running 5K. You know what I mean? It's like absolutely made for you. So Mossy used to do this thing. He used to piss me off at training. So we'd just be most chilled guy ever. Re- most, so relaxed. And then when it comes to doing like little sprinty sort of drills, he'd just turn it on. And he's quick, man. He was quick. I think that this might be the only time in my life, Mossy, I would beat you in a in a race. <laughs> but for all those times you beat me at training, uh, yeah, that 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 kicking off to Mossy is one of those guys that if you're playing against him, you would kick the other way. <laughs> Just kick to the other side of the field. Why are we kicking to this guy? <laughs> yeah, we used to do that <laughs> against Hull KR. Do not kick to Mossy Masai. Anybody else? The other way. Yeah, we try and get him in a load of tackles. We'll get him in a load of tackles first. Make sure he's a bit That's tired. It. Then yeah. we'll go get after him. Get him tired. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Oh. Listen, Mossy, it's so nice to see you smiling when you remember those memories as well. And you've got them for the rest of your life. And look, just listening to you for the last hour or so, um, absolute, and it is overused, but you are an absolute inspiration, mate. Um, yeah. So, you know, you should be so proud of that and what you've done to, to help other people just, just speaking about these sorts of issues. And, you know, even with a smile on your face with someone's complete stranger's finger up your ass, and at the moments that you've been through is going to help people. Um, so listen, I'd, I'd love to have a pint with you someday, mate. And, but I know you're going back to Oz soon and I would absolutely encourage everyone to, to donate, as Mark said as well. You can text them 5MOSSY to 70085 to donate five quid. It's five quid. Yeah, you can do better than that. Tenor, uh, 10 Mossy to 70085. You get the picture. You can donate up to £20 or go to uh, Mossy's website, www.mossymasoifoundation.co.uk. All the best, Mossy. Hope the trip back to Australia goes well and um, we'll definitely keep in touch with you. All right, cheers, guys. Thanks for having me tonight. All the best, Moss. Yeah, good good to see you, mate. Legend, legend, Moss. Thank Thanks, you very guys. much, everyone, for listening to Out of Your League. I'll have, a, of course, a new episode for you every week available to download from wherever you get your podcasts. You can also watch us on YouTube. And don't forget to give us a little follow at Out of Your RL on Twitter. We'll see you next week. <laughs>